Hiya, welcome to another episode of Pickler the Podcast. We are your co-host, Stacey Townsend and John, the people's champ, Davison. John, I don't think there's anything better than capping a Friday with happy hour and a podcast with you. So cheers to you. Cheers, Stace. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I only have water in this cup. I ran out of beer and every other uh, alcoholic <laughs> beverage in my fridge already this week. So <laughs> It's been a rough uh, week, it sounds like. I only have water. <laughs> so it's not like me. I'm usually the drinker. That's um, all right. I know. Well, we made well, it to Friday. Did, did I see that? Was it the same? Do we have Is it like same? a pickler mug or something? It looked like it. Oh, we have a pickler uh, thing here. Oh, there we go. We'll have to there get you on our level. We'll, we'll have to get you one. Yeah, I really need one of those. Well, I think we should just roll right into it because sneak peek, yeah. we have an amazing guest today, uh, <laughs> Travis Rettenmeyer, who is not only a pickleball pro, but a major league pickleball team owner uh, is here, which as you may know, major league pickleball is getting ready for their second uh, season. They are coming in strong, starting on uh, Wall Street, ringing in the bell this coming week, heading over to do a draft party at the New York City Open, and then rolling right into the event, which is June 3rd through June 5th. And we're so excited, Travis, to have you on and to learn about your experiences. And before I, I, I turn it over to you, I guess I should also mention you are a, uh, you had a 10-year veteran on the ATP Tour, ranking as high as 57, so quite a stellar tennis career before you found pickleball. So welcome, Travis. Thank you, yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So tell us. is pretty decent, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's really all relative, you know. It doesn't feel that good when I say it, but to some, it sounds like something. You were so close to being top 50, but now you're just top 100, just, you know. I just lie. I just say top 50. And yeah, you like might as well. <laughs> That's close enough. Rounding error. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so tell us, Charles, how did you find pickleball from your tennis days? Uh, a friend of mine was kind of going through a, a spiraling effect, I would say, of, of just job, work, life, job, work, life. And I came to stay with a friend in St. Petersburg named Chris Marquez. And just by chance, he said, let's go check out this community. There's these rec courts down the street. So we went to Crescent Lake here in St. Pete. And there was like, again, probably 80 people for six courts. And we didn't know what to do. There was a paddle rack. I had no clue. It's like, I don't know the rules. I uh, don't know how to keep score. But just ask somebody, how do we play? And so we put the, the paddles up there in the paddle rack. And I, I can still recall the first game that I played, a woman was getting upset at me for taking balls in the middle. My ball. That was my ball. And so I was a little offset at the beginning. But I noticed that I kept wanting to come back. And then slowly but surely, I just met like every friend that I have now is pickleball oriented. Everyone, I don't even, it's just every conversation that I have, every uh, dinner that I have is, is something in related to pickle, related to pickleball. And that's because of St. Pete, obviously the great sport in general. And uh, the age range on that is, you know, from a, a guy 20 years old and I got a, a buddy who's 70, you know, and, and that's again, what pickleball brought to me. And, and that's how it kind of won my heart. Mm -hmm. It's actually crazy when you uh, first get to the court, you see that 70 year old, you're like, oh man, I'm going to. I'm going to kick his ass and then they He's just destroy you. Yeah, they destroy <laughs> yeah. you the first game. And you're like, what just happened? <laughs> well, it's part of it though, right? I mean, like there's, there's no, yeah. it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't discriminate. You know, if you have skill, you have skill, period. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the MLP and how you're involved and what it means to be a team owner. And I mean, that's a yeah, so exciting really fortunate event to come into that. Super excited about it. Uh, obviously watched it last year um, as I was kind of getting into the sport. Maybe I'd been playing for a month or two months or so when I when I first got to watch it. And more than anything, just wanted to play it. And then uh, there's a gentleman here named Graham D'Amico. This is his Smash Bros, so I'll rip him out real quick. But um, who's kind of been like the guy who's been pushing me to play. Like I had never had any intention of actually playing a pickleball tournament. I just thought it was fun <laughs> to go hang out with my friends. But Graham was insistent, like, man, you're really good. You got to go play. You got to go play. You got to go play. And so by chance, I get in the car with him. We're driving to a rec game, and he's on the phone with Brooks Wiley talking about getting a team. And mm -hmm. Brooks was relaying that he needed a, a, a namesake, essentially, to get a team. You, you, there was a lot of people bidding, but they wanted someone who could move the needle. And so Graham didn't have anyone like that. 
Well, I knew the Bryan brothers really well. So I called the Bryan brothers and said, would you guys be interested? And they said, yes. And we kind of got our first meeting. Steve Kuhn flew to St. Petersburg, who's honestly the nicest guy ever. Like he's, I think this intimidating presence because of all he's done in his life and all he's accomplished, but couldn't be a kinder, more gentle guy ever. Like I, it's hard, it's hard to explain. So anyway, we kind of started to uh, go down that path and the Bryan brothers ultimately opted out, but Graham was really the guy that I wanted to do these things with because mm-hmm. to me, he's like the, the mayor of pickleball. He's the guy that runs the show here. If you want games, if you want got questions, if you anything you need, Graham's the guy. So um, he was really passionate about it. He was really excited about it. And I just kind of followed suit. And then as I got to know Steve more, we went out to Dreamland to practice. I realized pretty quickly that these people had vision. They had um, enormous upside. There's obviously a lot of things that are fluid, especially as Dundon made that push for the PPA. But Mm -hmm. uh, it was something that I knew I would regret if I wasn't a part of it a few years down the line. The the financial contribution was, was worth it to me in any capacity because to follow along with such great owners, such great people that are already involved in it, I'm blessed. Like I, I'm, not, I'm not on the scale of these people, but yet they embraced me. They wanted me to part, be a part of it. And then uh, I was just fortunate. No, that's amazing. So, so what have your been your responsibilities or duties as a team owner so far? So far, not much. I mean, obviously just the draft. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're working on kind of how we're going to promote ourselves. We came up with our team name. Um, which we are the Florida Smash, which I was excited about. I wanted the St. Pete Smash, but we kind of wanted a larger region as we discussed it more because ultimately I think that's where it will go, right? I think eventually you'll have teams that, that rep a region, which I think is really critical. And, you know, no Team BLQK and Team Clean is all, it's nice and all, but uh, I know the people of my community, they don't care that much about a company or a guy. They care about St. Pete. They want to rep mm-hmm. their region. So, um that was an important part of the branding from my perspective and something that sold me on it. And then of course we're, we're kind of starting to market ourselves and, and what are we going to do as, as time progresses to make sure we're a team that everybody wants to be interested in. And then there's just been, you know, a lot of team owner meetings just to kind of discuss where the league will go as time progresses. Um, the business ventures that they're going to tie themselves to, which I think there's quite a few things that are in the, in the pipeline that are, are really cool. And I think Steve, again, can't ask for a better guy to head it because he can he can manage it seems like 80 tasks at once where you know i'm lucky to walk and chew gum so you know uh <laughs> not not too much going on yet how how did you come up with the name smash i'm assuming uh, from graham smash pickleball is it or smash yeah I think, I think so um steve it was steve's idea kind of originally and mm-hmm. then uh we had some others like I wanted the crowns, you know, or the Royals or something along those lines. But I think it just kind of fit the theme ultimately. And I think it was in to entice Graham to be as, as involved as possible Mm -hmm. because again, Graham is also infinitely smarter than me and clearly grasps pickleball. I think the pulse of pickleball better than I do. And so I think it was a way to just entice him to kind of, be involved in the Florida smash and in this region and promote MLP as much as possible. But, uh, you know, we're stoked on the name. I think we'll, we'll be smashing some people. We got a good squad. Can't name the players, but we have a very good squad and, uh, we're excited about it. Are you going to encourage them to just, uh, be very high powered, uh, smashing everybody? (laughs) I am absolutely going to try to be as boisterous as possible with the players and hope that they (laughs) are, fun you know like for me and that's kind of the duality of this tennis for me was really stressful super stressful mm-hmm. just tension you know did it since i was a little boy and and there was all this riding on it pickleball for me is super fun and i want to you know bring that always like if if i play or if the people that i'm playing with for instance i played dj young in punta gorda and i love dj man i think he's the man i think he's actually way mm-hmm. better than he generally plays he's just a little bit uh you know, <laughs> goes a little too much at times but yep. with that said, I was kind of fist pumping him and screaming in his face and like, who are you messing with? Who are you messing with? <laughs> right? And so then we have a timeout and I went up to him and, I, and he started to yell back at me. 
Mm-hmm. Now, as a kid, this might be like, oh, we're going to butt heads. We're going to war. But I went up to him. I was like, hey, man, thanks for yelling at me. Like, I haven't felt that in a long time. That was really great. And he, and he was like, yeah, yeah, of course. So, you know, like, let's just keep it going. So we kept. So the point is, is like, it's not so much about uh, proving myself or anything like that. Pickleball to me is fun. And, I, and the game is fun. And the people around are fun. So that's what I hope the Florida Smash bring, that we engage the people around us that were, you know, friendly to one, to, a, to one another. And, and that's what I hope it's about. Just the excitement. You, you want to bring the excitement to MLP. Yeah. Yeah, just the excitement. Just you know, just as Stacy was talking about that rec play, like you love playing it. You love the people you're mm-hmm. you're intertwined with. Like that's what I want people to feel when we're playing is that man, these guys are having so much fun and and you know, that's that's what I want. Without giving away too much, was that kind of your strategy going in? To have an uh, exciting... as far as the selection? No. The selection was meant to work <laughs> because nobody cares. <laughs> you gotta win. <laughs> If there's one thing I've learned, if you're uh, colorful and, you know, jovial and all these things, but you lose, it doesn't mean much. So, no, we intend to win. Right. I got and you. I think we have a good Yeah. So. Well, uh, are you going to stick it to, um, uh, to, to Gary V? Gary Because he's getting v. a lot of attention, of course, you know. I mean, first of all, I watch the guy's Instagram constantly. He is a very <laughs> dark guy. And clearly full of emotion, but yeah, that would be very fun. I would love to, like, that would be a perfect yelling match for me. I'd love to stare that guy down and give him a little couple <laughs> points, something in his direction, and, and hopefully he'd give it back a little bit. But I again, get all well. good time. Pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah, like, there's another guy. Like, they have some amazing owners in this and, and people that seem to have the long term vision of pickleball moving forward. Like, I don't know what your guys' mm. take is on the. PPA and the Dundon and all the contracts and all that stuff. It's, it's, um, I don't like it. You know, if I'm just frank, like it just feels wrong to me, Yeah. but you know, I'll, I'll hey, you can say whatever you want here. We yeah, won't tell well, anybody. We'll, we'll just put yeah. it on YouTube. <laughs> all good. You know, I mean, I, again, I just think that pickleball is in such an infancy stage. The more that you build each other up, the better it is. And to try to, uh, cannibalize or minimize anybody, isn't the way to go. So to see it in that light and that's the angle that I see it from, and I'm sure there's two sides to it, mm-hmm. you know, not a huge fan. So all for the MLP, all for the APP, hope they join forces and just crush it. Yeah. And I will say, uh, to kind of touch on what you said a little bit ago, I don't know if you remember because it looked like in the draft, you were on your phone at the courts still at us open. Um, you saw that. but I was in the, uh, I was in the the draft room because I was with Dom as a uh, okay. advisor. There, there was nobody that called me, so I didn't advise anybody anything. <laughs> but, gotcha. But um, okay. I will I will say though that all the owners seem like really nice, like good people. They were all joking with each other the whole time. Um, it seemed to be you know like a pretty fun group of people. Yeah, I hope I hope it's very competitive and good fun. That's mm. the hope, right? Because that's what's gonna spur the emotion and make it enjoyable to watch and and that's what i'm excited to see like how do the the real masterminds behind this how do they how do they pitch it to the public how do they make it the most exciting event and how does that continue to grow you know that's that's why i'm invested in it that's why i want to be a part of it because i think the upside is exponential but i don't think anyone really knows yet Mm -hmm. is it tough for you to um try to promote your team because i mean the team's already set but you can't do it yet Right. So yeah. And that, that has kind of sucked the waiting game. Yeah, for sure. Especially because in particular, the community here, which again, I, I wouldn't have never, I would have never gotten invested in any, any of this if it wasn't for the community here. Like the community here has embraced mm-hmm. me so much, pushed me to do things that I never would have done prior. Um, and they're all asking me questions, you know, who's on the team? Are you on your own team? Are you? No, no, no. And I can't say a word. I'm just like, ah, you wait to see, wait to see. But yeah, you know, I want to start, promoting it and inviting people to come and inviting people to watch and telling them, I just can't tell them those things yet. Yeah. Well, I think the draft will be fun in New York. Um, I assume I you're so going. Too. It's debatable. I'm, I'm a 50 50 right now, but I've got a little girl and job. Mm-hmm. So priorities still outweigh uh, <laughs> my alternate responsibilities at times, but I'm working, oh, I'm navigating on how to, to change those things a little bit. (laughs) 
John, can we spend a few minutes and break down the draft and the format just so everybody understands how Major League Pickleball works? Uh, they have tw- – go ahead. There's 12 teams and 48 players, but speak to how the draft works a little bit. Yeah, so it was like, you know, one team gets the first pick, and then it goes like uh, the top female and then the other team. So say team one, right, gets the top female. Then the bottom team gets the top male. And then they kind of like work like this. And it's a little intricate, but they like right. They, they so like I, if, if you got the first pick, then you got one and twenty-four yeah. for the men, or twelve and thirteen for the women. Yeah, right. So it it, it is segmented. Every time that you picked, it was always going to add up to twenty-four. And so you have yeah. four, four players on each team: two male, two female. Do you have two any, male, two female. any any alternates, Travis? Yes, there are plenty of alternates. I think the alternate for our team is going to be Share Bear. Oh. Uh, he's been adamant that he wants to be the alternate. I had a conversation with him the other night. He's like, what do you think about coach slash alternate? I was like, well, like talk about energy. That's a lot. That sounds exciting. <laughs> that yeah. does sound exciting. Uh, we saw the interview by Cher Bear after his uh, PPA win. So I know he up. was uh, advocating for a, an alternate spot. Yeah, I think, I think that's in the pipelines, but, uh, you know, everyone's got to agree. I loved his interview. But yeah, they were lovely. I loved his interview. He's like, can I please be a, uh, an alternate, a backup? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he it. sure is excited. I don't, he, I don't know how he pulls it off. I really don't. I played a couple matches. I was exhausted. The guy is, you know, self-proclaimed 30 pounds overweight, and he's way, he's faster than me. It's, I don't get it. <laughs> it's really incredible. It looks like a little, you know, mighty mouse out there. He he is peak athletic ability. He's he's like the John Daly of uh, pickleball. Yeah, Chris Farley esque. You know, just big <laughs> <laughs> So after the draft party, which is going to we're going to reveal all the teams, which is this coming yes. weekend in New York Saturday. City. Yeah. What, what are, do you have any marketing plans? You're going to get out, the your team out in front of all the Florida pickleball players. What's what are you going to do? So we have an event in the works right now. Um, at a local place here in St. Pete. That's the first thing I'm doing on my end. Um, we're, you know, mostly working towards just merchandising, shirts, cards, stuff like that. But to, but to really promote our team, it's kind of leaning more towards events in our own regions and having, having uh, so there's three owners on our team trying to do events in our own regions to just kind of promote our team. But yes, Florida is where we will spend the majority of our time promoting as we're the Florida smash, but we will most likely spend most of that in St. Pete simply because we already have a community that will support us. Hmm. No, I love the idea of the regions. I don't, I don't know if you, John and I did a podcast with a sports expert, Ben Shields, and he really talked about the importance of teams and regions for, you know, people to attach themselves to. So I love the concept of it being Florida, uh, Florida is a huge hub, obviously, for pickleball players. So it's, I think it's yes. really great and smart, and hopefully people get behind you. Uh, how else how so can people find the team or, or support you? On, on social uh, media? Just through MLP.com at the moment. Not yet. Just through MLP.com. Like, again, a lot of this has been done quickly, and there's been a lot of moving parts. <laughs> since the PPA, Tom Dundon deal happened. I think there was a lot of things that were uh, strung together rather quick. So it's going to take a minute. You know, I, I don't think I can really answer a lot of those questions exactly how it's going to be marketed, exactly how we're going to promote, promote ourselves. I think that's going to be a lot up to the owners, to, to mm-hmm. guys like myself and, and Julio and Andrew, who are my co-owners, and to ensure that we make the right steps to promote our team. And my hope is that every owner of their team, because there's a lot of big players in this, you know, people with deep mm-hmm. pockets, and the, the, the matter of importance to them is something I can't speak to but I hope it's really important to them. I hope they love pickleball. They see the growth of pickleball and they want to do the same in their region. And the conversation that I've had with Steve on numerous occasions is just what you mentioned. Regions are important. People want to root for St. Pete. They want to root for Miami. They want to root for LA. They want That's what they want to root for. That's the only way you can galvanize the troops behind you. Nobody mm-hmm. is going to care too much otherwise, in my opinion. So yeah, how do you see it all all shaking out, Travis? If you had a crystal ball, how would you see all the the tours and MLP and all that shaking out? Ooh, it's a very tough question. Um, I think hopefully there won't be a cannibalization. You know, I don't think that's the case. 
because I think the mistake that the PPA is making is there are the talent pool that's in pickleball right now is very low. Nothing against the guys. They're great players. But the talent pool that's coming is going to be astounding. I mean, when you have guys mm -hmm. that are three, 400 in the world ATP that are just honestly on a different level athletically and they're making no money. And then there's this upside in another sport that's growing exponentially. They're going to say, well, hey, I'll go over there. You know, maybe I can get a sponsor. Maybe I can be, you know, the next Tyson McGuffin. And that, as that talent pool comes in, you can buy guys like Riley Newman and Ben Johns to play exclusively for, for the PPA. But you have no understanding of the 100 guys in the next three years that are going to come through that are going to be just as good, probably better. Because mm -hmm. they just have better racket skills. Nothing again, nothing against the guys, but you you simply can't compete with a twenty three year old that's had a racket in his hand since he was two years old. You just can't. There's just yeah. gonna be a better skill set. So um, I think I think MLP is gonna have its place. I'm hoping the MLP and APP kind of um, work together where they have events and then MLP events segmented throughout the year because I think the team events are really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope the PBA fades out, to be frank. You know, that's, that's what I'm hoping. So what side of the fence are you on? D D I'm just kidding. But uh... yeah. I'm a loyal guy. Once I pick it, I usually stick with it. And I try to be diplomatic, but in this case, uh, I don't intend to be. Hey, you know, but, we all have our reasons, right? Yeah. Well, Steve's we been awesome to me and I, I commend what he's doing. And I think he, I think the biggest thing is he has the right, uh, I think he has a genuine heart about what he, he wants the best for pickleball. I don't know if that's the case elsewhere. Mm -hmm. He seems like a cool dude. I mean, I haven't met him yet, but uh, I'll He's be there. Be. So, you know, just letting you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be awesome. rowdy. I'm going to be rowdy. So rowdy. if you want me, if, 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 you want me on, uh, if you want me rowdy for Florida smash, you know, I'm, I'm taking bids. We're going to have some good merch, man. I'm telling you, some good stuff's going to be there that other teams aren't thinking of. So, yeah, we're, we're bitch, what are you thinking? What's the offer? Hmm. Mm. Like, I mean, you said you like beers, a couple yeah. beers. Yeah. That could do know, it. If you bring me a case of beer, I'll cheer for you the whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Getting real rowdy. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, I think it, doesn't it, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. No. Either. I'm a lightweight. <laughs> So Travis, let's talk about the business side of pickleball. What do you think pickleball needs to be more sophisticated, established uh, in, in a business way? Well, I think one that we kind of spoke about briefly um, is there needs to be better prize money for the players. There needs to be a, a clearer pathway for success. I don't understand truly when I look at the when I go through pickleball tournaments and you're paying whatever 150 registration and 150 per event and all this, I don't grasp how there can be as many players as there are. And I understand they have uh, they have their expenses, but it must not be being done that efficiently because there's just not enough money in it. Now they have sponsors in it, some, but I think to your point, the only way that it becomes a legitimate professional sport is they have to have quality sponsors. Um, and you have to have stars, right? So we have a few with Ben Johns and Tyson McGuffin. And I think they're really the two guys that maybe Zane that people really, uh, attach themselves to, but you need more stars. And, and I think you get that only through money. That's just the reality. You only get that level of talent and, and, uh, people willing to put their lives into things. If you, if you offer a reward at the end, mm -hmm. it's to get that best, you know, the highest class athletes you know not just from tennis but the kids growing up too just really good athletes coming up you know you talk about tennis, Absolutely. Right. but maybe yeah, there's maybe. a kid that's three years old with a pickleball paddle and i mean i got my daughter playing pickleball because mm -hmm. i think it has enormous upside and i think it's you know there's a longer term trajectory of how long she could potentially play you know i have my own little mastermind <laughs> but i think that's a good question stacy because the business side of it i don't i don't think it's it's there yet, you know, and I think maybe Dundon has the right idea. I, it's time will tell because he can take it to that next, that next level. But when will pickleball be on TV consistently? Is it, and in your guys' opinion, I'd be curious, do you think it has that kind of upside from a viewership perspective? Do you think people, because obviously we all love to play it, 
love it. And I love to watch pickleball, but that's me. And I'm not sure the average person loves to watch pickleball. Time will tell. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think gambling will help. Um, That's a very good point. Well said. If they bring in betting, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. People will bet on anything and they will want to watch it. I think that's definitely the league's moving in that direction. Yeah. But I, but I don't think the sport is there yet in terms of the safeguards around it. You know, like when you get to the betting, maybe, you know, I'm not like trying to point fingers at anybody, but like you have to bring in in USADA and start testing players. You're going to have, you know, you're going to have to create a lot more safeguards because if there's people betting, well, again, especially money, if guys are making 2,500 bucks to win and they get a, you know, offer for 10 grand to lose game two, then mm-hmm. yeah, of course you have to have those, those kind of things in place. How did tennis yeah. handle those issues? Like was there betting when you were on the ATP tour, Travis? All the time. And it was sketch, you know, um, particularly in the fact that tennis has, the ITF tour and challengers, which is what you play in order to get into tour events and grand slams. Those ones aren't going to be monitored in the same case. And you have guys playing for 500 bucks for a match, you know, a guy doesn't really care, but if, if he can, but that same match, you could have 2.5 million bet on that match. So if you got some, some Bella coming through and saying, Hey, I'll, I'll give you 25 grand. If you lose the first set for a struggling tennis player, it's a difficult thing to say no to. Yeah. Generally, he's going to take that. I mean, I think a lot of people say no, and I think I think honestly, most people say no because the the backlash is so severe, mm-hmm. and you know, there's been a few guys who have lifetime bans, but they had to obviously. I think it was more the sites, to be honest, more than even the ATP tour. I think the sites themselves kind of putting safeguards around the fact that okay, if there's a unique bet suddenly on. Uh, a challenger in yeah. Istanbul and there's $45,000 on one bet on the first set, you know, ding, 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 something's yeah. going on. Red flag. Well, right. So I think that's really where you saw some, uh, some collaboration between the betting sites and the tour to, to see, okay, maybe there's a pattern of people betting on this particular guy when the odds are stacked against or uh, so they're, you know, there's going to have to be something along the lines of that as, as betting comes in. But I, I like what you said. That is, that is absolutely, they've done some studies on that, that the sports that people enjoy betting on the most have the strongest viewership mm-hmm. period. The yep. way it is. I think it's getting better. See... Oh, go ahead, Stace. Oh, I was just going to say, I think it's getting better from a viewership, just production quality. Everybody's up, upping uh, the production quality, which makes it more interesting. Uh, but you're right. I you still I, I ask people whenever they're like, oh, I saw pickleball on TV. TV. I always ask, what'd you think? You know, the people that, are, that right. don't play, and sometimes they say like, oh, it's really interesting. But sometimes they say it was really boring. They just think dig dig or right. So <laughs> uh, I think being more creative with the the production to really show the intricacies of pickleball, which is very difficult to do, right? Like it's hard yeah. to show spin and angles. They're subtle. Yeah, they're very subtle. So I think that's a real challenge. Um, and then to your point about stars, right. Getting those stories out, uh, and getting, you know, like who is Annalie Waters, who is Ben Johns, like, you know, more personality, uh, than on-court play people maybe will attach to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, like, that's why I like the MLP concept. I love, I come from softball team sport. Like I re- I identify with that much more, uh, right. probably from my background. So I love the team concept. Uh, and more rowdiness, like more excitement just in the stands, like seeing that emotion, I think helps viewers at home share in that emotion. Um, so more alcohol sales is probably a key. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be- beer that sales will definitely help the, cause both tours. I mean, if, imagine if you had like a bar cart and a barista, like walking out the sides of the, the VIP tents at the, I mean, that would make it look so much more fun, you know, like kind of like right. a beach volleyball that brings that kind of atmosphere to the court and makes it look exciting. That's what pickleball definitely needs for optics on camera too. Also though, because as these facilities keep opening up, you know, how many, how many facilities are opening around the country and tennis clubs are being converted. Mm -hmm. And I think just the facilities are going to improve. So you're going to have legitimate stadium courts and, um, and hopefully more, more fans cheering, you know, because the events I've gone to, they're okay. You know, they remind me of like a future in tennis, not many people yeah. watching. 
the U.S. Open was maybe the the one that was was um, you know had a legitimate stadium, obviously, and they were scalping tickets in the in the uh, parking lot. So there's obviously a demand. You know, I think the question is, how does it next get a Gatorade sponsor or a Nike sponsor, and then we see it on ESPN. You know, obviously, Steve has something with CBS Sports. Uh, mm-hmm. PPA is doing something with the Tennis Channel, and that's great. And I think that's really cool. But to take that next step, what that's going to take, I'm not sure. And it might be something as simple as luck in that you get a star, a great player who is very business savvy, who is willing to promote mm-hmm. themselves, who is willing to be um, more open maybe. Because mm-hmm. to me, the guys that are in it, now and i'm not speaking for everyone there's some really good personalities but i just haven't seen that that person yet where i'm like extremely drawn to them you know and i just want to know more i don't i don't have that yet and maybe that will come with time um but that might be the thing that that takes it over the edge where everybody wants a piece of you know joe schmo and joe schmo is just you know he, you, you got to see him. It's incredible what he does. You know, he's, maybe he's got some Nick Kyrgios style in him or whatever mm-hmm. it is, you know, something along those lines. Can you, Can you imagine pinpoint? if we had a Conor McGregor? Sorry. <laughs> if we had a Conor McGregor of pickleball that would just like just start talking shit right right before every match, during every match. Really? Like, that'd be I'm huge. telling you, I think, the thing is, I think it's such a great shit talk sport too. Like that's mm-hmm. the you're, whatever sport you have battles where you're 14 feet from the guy. And you're mm-hmm. eyeing them constantly, and you're going to get another look at them. Like if you hit someone in tennis with an overhead, you might not get a look at it for you know the rest of the match. You might not get them. But in pickleball, mm-hmm. you know it's coming. It might be the next point. You're going to get another look. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully you get that that banter back and forth. Like I don't know yet what it is that's going to take the sport to the next level. But you know they project 40 million people will playing it be playing it recreationally by, by the end of the decade. That's a yeah. substantial number. Yeah, it you know, it'll be the largest played rec sport in the country, maybe the world. I'm, I don't remember the exact statistic, but there's got to be some some special talent in that that comes out, and hopefully a, something like a Gatorade or a Nike or mm-hmm. uh, a big brand like that attaches to, and and you have stars in the making in a sport that that is on TV. Yeah, and I think every pro, especially some of the top top guys and gals, all need social media training. Every single one of them. Absolutely. I mean, I'm new to this in particular, and I'm trying to kind of build my own myself up. I never, I, I was on social media my whole life. I've never been on it, mm-hmm. and and there's no <laughs> question that if you do this appropriately and you're trying to market yourself, you need help, you need assistance, you need someone to to kind of help you along those that pathway. You're absolutely right. Social media training, um, daily interaction with fans, because if you watch as I do the events, generally it's the same people that are commenting on the matches over and over and over, you know, we need a a much larger inflow. And I'm surprised by the viewership. When I watch something like the APP or the PPA and the viewership is only a few thousand people that blows my mind. How is that not higher? Hmm. I mean, what do you guys think? Why is it not higher? It should be. There's a few thousand people playing pickleball right now in, in a 30 mile radius. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I, I, um, I, I don't think either tour has really figured that out yet. Yeah. I don't know. I will say today I was watching the the live stream and it was over 3000, which is the first time I think I saw it that high, which is happy to see. Uh, but, but you're right. I, I think, I think everybody gets lost sometimes in the number, you know, there's 4.8 million pickleball players, but then that's counts people that play one time per year. And then the people that are playing are 10, 10% of that. So 400,000 that play like a few times a week. And then the people that are playing tournaments are just 1%. So around 40, 40 plus thousand, right? So, uh, or 50,000. And it's, um, so you lose sight of kind of the numbers. I know the upside's there, but to your point, we need to move pickleball away from us enthusiasts, right? And get mm-hmm. a broader net so we, we capture, you know, you know like I, I, I don't watch tennis, but I'll watch Wimbledon. I'll watch Serena, right? So how do we right. get that kind of presence for pickleball? I don't know. I don't. It, it sounds like a chicken either. and egg problem. The way you describe the sponsorships, <laughs> Travis, and stars. Do we need sponsorships to get the stars, or do we need stars to get the sponsorships? Well said. And again, I think that would come. Um, I think you get the stars once there's enough money in there. But I don't. But maybe the sponsors are the only way you get the money. Mm-hmm. But maybe that's also efficiency. I don't. You know, the way that 
pickleball is obviously unique in that you have rec tournaments at the same place you have professional tournaments, which I think, of course, it has to be for the time being. Mm -hmm. But when does that start to change a little bit too, where there's a real draw just to watch the pros or, you know, some high quality pickleball? Um, yeah, it might be a chicken and the egg situation, something that's going to take, yeah. take some time to figure out. It might be the evolution of the game too, as it progresses. Cause I mean, over, I mean, I have been playing pickleball for like five years and I've dabbled in pro events for, you know, a couple of years and the game is just getting so much faster. Right. There's so much, so I mean, much more I mean, hands battles than the dinking it was three years right. ago. And I think to go to Stacy's point, dink, 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 that's not going to be around for long. You no. know, and it's going to shift away from that more and more, especially, you know, we can talk about paddle gate with carbon, but especially <laughs> as these carbon faces or uh, carbon fiber faces in general, there's, there's going to be so much more rotation on the ball. Mm. And I'm anxious to see these, like, even like watching Hayden Patrick when I watched this little kid, he's 16 or 17 years old and playing pickleball a lot longer than I have kids who, who grow up on in it that are extremely athletic, they're going to do unique things with the ball. It's going to change even more. So it's going to get more and more aggressive. Oh yeah. It's crazy how like fast twitch his, um, his volleys are too, you know, like, nasty. And, and even his dinks, it's like, he takes no backswing and it's just like, and I'm like, what? Yeah, does he's he very do? risky, yeah. pretty creative. Um, like I think he's really good personally. I don't, good. We'll see where he goes, but I think, I think he's really good. So one okay. thought we had, we, we had a group chat, the people's champ, myself and podcast Nick today. And <laughs> in, in the group chat, there was a comment that came up and said, uh, I think it was podcast Nick. He said, I think in pickleball, it should be right like wrestling and you should have creative <laughs> names. So maybe this could be, uh, what do you think of that, Travis? So, so John is the like, people's like, champ. Or w, like WWE? Exactly. Like, so yeah. John's the people's <laughs> champ. Well, I'm affectionately known as Dirt <laughs> That's taken. No one can have that. And yeah, I mean, the, the what? Maybe the dirt bag. Okay. <laughs> it's because apparently I show up, which has always been a how you look at it, either a quality or a flaw of mine. You know, I show up with one paddle, uh, maybe a banana, and I don't ever have anything. So as I've you know immersed myself in the St. Pete pickleball community, I just kind of take things from people's bags as I need them. And I've now been known, oh, the dirt bag took another grip. All right, dirt bag. You know, and maybe I wear, look a little grungy. So I'm good with that. I, I like it, you know. So what I do you think? Should everybody adopt uh, having to have a pickleball name? I think, um, I don't think that's the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just, we just need to see how this beautiful sport plays out and hopefully we get more people in it like Steve Kuhn and, and uh, mm -hmm. among others that want to see it do well. And then we just need to get a little lucky. Even, I mean, I'm hearing even in Los Angeles, how many people are playing. So it's going to hit the mainstream soon. I just hope sooner than later, because I think I got five years left to play before my body says, eh, you know, maybe still some doubles, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm anxious to give it a run. I want to see what these young guys that think they're so good I want to see how they genuinely are. Right. Do you think um, singles or doubles will take off more? Doubles. For TV. Sure. Doubles. That's well said. I mean, from a, yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to think about that one a little more because as the athleticism progresses and guys get so much more creative, singles could be very, very unique because mm -hmm. I mean, think of it. Just take, let's take a six, eight, super specimen that's earning from damn near the baseline that might, that might be around the corner, you know, things like that might take place. So, um, that's a tough call. I think maybe singles, as you say it, the only problem with singles is the rallies are so short. They're even shorter mm -hmm. than tennis on average. Like it's just so boom, boom. And I don't know how you alter that. I don't know. It's crazy because some of the talent in singles, especially at the top is really improving. You know, yes. J Dubs, Ben, Zane, Tyson, Jay. J you know, those guys, the they... He's the best player in the world. I mean, at least in singles. Like, he's probably not in doubles yet, but in singles, he's the best player on the planet. I've watched the guy. Mm -hmm. He's nasty. Like, ben is obviously very, very good, to be honest. But, but J Dub obviously had him in the open. He's beating him mm -hmm. prior, and he plays unique. You know, he's, he's, he does the, he's the only guy that I've ever seen do a, a singular shake and bake and he does it all the time 
if anything short, he just busts it right at you and flies forward. And he's very smooth with his movement. And he, I've actually, like, I, I practice it now. I'm like, okay, I'm going to practice the J-Dub. You know, I'm going to practice it. Because, <laughs> I swear. Because I watched it. It was like, wow, that's, that makes total sense. And everyone else is crafty and dinking a little bit. And fine. No, he's, he's not doing that. He just comes at you. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you can credit Stacy for that because uh, they train together all the time. So all right, yeah. you can credit Stacy for getting it. Worked on you. Uh, ah, he got chicken wing and then popped you. He was like, that might work. He, yeah, he has hey, can I get a moment for a second? I got to get my charger out. Sorry, guys. Oh, no worries. Yeah. Um, well, I have, a feeling, I have a feeling if Travis had the number one male pick, I think I know who he might have picked. You do? If you, if you had the number no. one. If you had yes. the number one. I have a feeling. Yes. Yeah, it's too bad. I could get into all the drama of that, but I can't. Thanks. Well, maybe we'll have you on next week after the draft party, and you can tell us how it really went down. That would be awesome. I, <laughs> I, I remember uh, taking down Jay Dubs when he played with Mirsha, and I, and I still joked on this day. I was like, you know, it was that, that moment when you started winning a lot more was after I beat you. And he said he almost, he almost put the paddle away. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Can I get one minute? Sorry. I just can't oh, find can't. my charger real quick. This is kind of embarrassing, but I got to oh, no find worries. it. No worries. We can always uh, trim this out. So. Okay. Um, the fans want the real thing, John. Oh yeah, they they, they want to see uh, the cargo shorts. You want to watch me look for my charger? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Travis had to go get a laptop charger from his neighbor, and he may or may not give it back to him. Um, Travis, <laughs> while you were gone, we were talking with uh, Podcast Nick, and he was very bummed that you didn't like his WWE idea because uh, there was a player in Atlanta in a basketball jersey, and his last name's Abraham, and his, okay. his pickleball name was Abraham Dinkin. <laughs> Which I think is pretty awesome. So, solid. I, I guess we just have to agree to disagree on that. <laughs> that's hey, that's what makes the world go round, man. I'm glad we do. I'm always looking for new ideas. Yep. Just I want good ones, you know. <laughs> yeah, and also touching on that. Um, so you're against the WWE names, which I understand. But um, what do you think about the rowdiness of the sport? Like Zane has talked about it too. You know, like. Um, he wishes people like players and the fans would get more rowdy. This isn't tennis, right? Like how sure. do you, you know, do you think that it needs to be in its own culture and identity and get rowdy and fun or does it need to be more like tennis? No, definitely doesn't need to be like tennis. I think it needs to be rowdy and fun, but again, you need it to be genuine. The guys who are doing it or the girls mm-hmm. who are doing it or the fans who are doing it, it has to be who they are. Who they and are. I, I don't think you can force yeah. people to be that way. Zane, for instance, I don't think he could be that way. Just judging by my first glance, I think he's just a really nice guy that is, you know, willing to get a little pumped up. But I don't know if he's, mm-hmm. you know, going to pump the chest like Tyson and it's going to look like that's who he is. <laughs> so, um, yeah. you know, again, I think it's one of those things where you need those characters, but they have to be exactly who they are. They can't be a front. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I so, mean, yeah, if I, I was like better, better, I would. Yeah. If I was a better player, Travis, you'd be seeing me on tour doing all that shit. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> That's too bad. You should be playing oh, yeah. Crescent Lake. Oh, yeah. We could really get at it. <laughs> I would uh like my favorite I my favorite match I've commentated so far was probably um this past weekend. Uh Johnny Goldberg versus Altoff Merchant. Wow. And they That's just too went at it. Yeah. They went at it the entire time. I mean, all tough at like yeah, almost threw out his hip. <laughs> right. <laughs> he almost threw out his hip, I think. Yeah, got it. No, 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 you're good. But yeah, I definitely think it needs to be genuine. You can't just have like, I don't know, Zane or just some like super quiet, like Johnson Cola. Can you imagine if he just flipped a switch and turned into Conor McGregor? Like that wouldn't work. <laughs> right, right. But I, I think it's funny. Like I, I almost feel like Tyson like um, emerged as that character. Suddenly, to some extent, you look mm-hmm. at him four years ago. He has no tats. He's skinny. You know, now the guy's got like a the beautiful pearly whites, and he's shaved top to bottom. <laughs> it's like, where did this guy come from? You know, so um, it's it's genuine for him, but I think he almost found who he was in this process of mm-hmm. of winning and creating his brand. 
definitely. And you know, he rocks it. He pulls it off. Not very many guys he does it very pull well, that yeah. look off. No, he does it very well. Like I honestly the guy uh, all the power to him. I watch him like how did he do that? How did he pull it off and and share your wisdom with the rest of us because he's he's uh he somehow can still teach the clinics and and you know mm-hmm. I'll give you one for instance, and I won't say who he played, but he played a match, and I was watching on YouTube, and he loses very close. Other mm-hmm. player walks off the court, doesn't say a word, and I watched on the sideline, and Tyson talks to almost every person that was watching, and it was like, "There's a smart guy, you know, sharp, mm-hmm. just kind of." That's why he always has the, uh, all the fans root for him, but he can still do the clinics where people pay a, an exorbitant amount to, to do his clinics where you wouldn't think maybe the 60 year old female with, you know, would like the guy that's tattoos and yelling, but he pulls it off where it still seems like he's a good guy. You know, it doesn't seem like he's a jerk. Yeah, definitely. I love yeah. Tyson. He's a good dude. Yeah. He actually talked trash like to me. Him. He was one of the reasons that I wanted to get <laughs> better at football. So I played I with Share Bear. I hadn't played in like a year. I played, and I when I say St. Saint, Saint Pete's where I fell in love with it, but I played a couple times in Lakewood Ranch a few years ago. And I was mm-hmm. playing a fair bit where I was playing well. Then I had a daughter, so no pickleball. Share Bear asked me to play a tournament, and I go play with him. And I'm thinking like, I'll be fine. You know, I can just, I'll go out there and wing it. I'll be good. I was terrible. I was atrocious. My ball feel was so bad. Everything was up. And so we played Tyson and Diescu first round. And he just destroyed me. And after the match, he's like, so I hear you were a good tennis player. I was like, yeah, I was pretty good. He's like, give it a couple months. You'll be good at pickle. It was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so then I've always held that in my head. It's like one of these days, you know, I'll reverse that. But I liked that for him. That, that was good for me. <laughs> Definitely. Stacey, you had a question? No, I was just going to say, I like, I like your comment about Tyson found himself through this process or through his pickleball career. I think that's, that'd be interesting to ask Tyson how pickleball kind of changed him or helped him evolve. Because I think uh, a lot of people, their lives are better because of pickleball. Like uh, you you said, the great community you have at Crescent, right? Like like they just grow so much through the sport, which is, it's hard to really wrap into words when you're not in it. Uh, But I would love that would, I just thought that was an interesting comment about how people evolve through the sport. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and speaking of evolution, think, going, I want to go back okay. to MLP. So last okay. year was the inaugural year. It was a really great splash, great event, event of the year. How, how does this year, how, how would you compare it to last year? What can we expect? I think more of the same, but, um, Knowing Steve, I think he's really going to blow it out of the water. I think you'll see better production value. I think you'll see a lot more marketing. I think you'll see a lot more highlights. And um, what I what I hope to see is it feels much more like a sporting event, and that you have uh, entertainment even between matches, and it feels like you're coming into a a true sporting event. Because I think that's for me. Mm-hmm. Other than like I said, the U.S. Open, that's what pickleball lacks. They all just feel like they're kind of put together. You know, and I don't think MLP will be that way. I think you're going to see a genuine event that feels like you're at a professional sporting event that's showcasing players, that has alternate entertainment. And I think you're going to see that progression quite a bit, it's particularly at the first event at Dreamland on June 3rd. Both, both for fans on site and fans at home, you think it will be uh, entertainment from start to finish during matches and in between? I do. I think that you're going to also see a lot of the players, at least I will, as I said, I will be encouraging it, um, that they are talking to the camera, talking to the fans, uh, embracing mm-hmm. themselves and, and the people around them to bring everyone in, right? Because that's what we all need for pickleball. We all need to feel like we're a part of it because the ones of us, mm-hmm. those of us that are in it, like you said, you can't explain it to other people, but if you can kind of maybe just make them feel it for a second, like we're all Oh, uh, battling and, and pickling together. And that's what I think Steve is, is aiming to do. I think his production value is going to be really good this year. I think he's going to have uh, some new filming options. He's, he's thrown out some really cool ideas to me as to how to show kind of the intricacies that we talked about, those subtleties. And, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think you're going to see that continued evolution. It might not be perfect, but I think you're going to see that continued evolution from last year 
for this year and, and in the years moving forward. Is there a different bracket? This so this year we have 12 teams. Last year there was eight. Is there a different format style? So you have two pools or is everybody playing everybody? How is that going to work? I think it's two pools again. I think, again, that's being discussed still. Oh, so still in the works. <laughs> still in the works, trying to look for the best options. And that's and fun. where can we expect Florida Smash to be? Where are we going to finish? Yeah, where what, what can we expect? Oof. I mean... Judging by the other teams, I think we have a couple ringers on our squad, and we will be just fine. We also have some exciting characters, so we'll definitely be the most fun team to watch, but beyond that, uh, I think we're going to be pretty damn good. I think so, too. I think so, too. I, I, I of course, know the teams, but um, Stacy doesn't. Oh, you do? Yeah, because I was so you know. call. So what do you think? you think? What do you think our chances are? You think we're going to be decent? I don't know. I think everybody's going to have to... Uh... Tune into the draft and make that opinion themselves. <laughs> yeah, please tune in the draft on Saturday. It should be very cool. I know that they have a lot planned for it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, 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 is any any final questions for Travis or Travis? Anything we should know before we sign off? I did have a question for you, since you guys have been in this a lot longer than I have. Mm -hmm. In pickleball or in tennis, they sell rackets by aligning themselves with players right so you got mm -hmm. the rafa you got the fed and it seems like pickleball does that a little bit but do you it seems like at least from my experience that that's changing uh as time has progressed i don't know if you guys are familiar with that but it seems like that's no longer a part of it do you think that there's a place for sponsorship or do you think that that is should be increased or diminished i guess is what i'm asking like player like johnson cola for instance who's was with Engage, switched to Pro XR, then I see him using an Engage. I asked myself how these guys do it. You know, mm -hmm. like how do they travel and play pickleball? And do you think it's a benefit to the sponsors? Do you think players are deserving of the sponsors? Do you think they sell paddles in the same way that it's done in tennis? I was just kind of curious if your take. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say, you know, who I hear this from, but, um, you know, I think some some uh, companies might find a struggle to get some ROI on putting you know paddles in players' hands. I think no some some players do it a lot better than others. Um, no doubt. Yes. I think you know your Tyson McGuffin. He does. I mean, he's does really well at selling his paddle. Obviously, Ben right. John's name on a paddle sold like crazy. No. But right. I think you know um, just some other types of paddles. No no hate, but you know. Who bought the Aspen Kern paddle? I don't know. I I've seen maybe three in my lifetime. You know, so right. like, um, I don't know. It, I think I think it really depends on the players, and that it's definitely going to make the pickleball companies more selective of who they are trying to sponsor. Um, I think you're actually going to see more people in like the four o four five ambassador level be sponsored. Um, I think they I think they actually sell paddles. Better. Yeah. Yep. Some, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think, like you said, it's selective and maybe that's the, so again, and getting back to it, just a real quick question. How do pickleball players ultimately prosper in the sport? How does that happen? How do guys do it? Is it just through clinics, camps, so forth? Or is that the only way to make any money as a pickleball professional? I think that's the, that's the way that they've been doing it with the camps and stuff. But I think the players get burnt out. Like Tyson doesn't right. even coach at any, uh, like all of his camps. He does like a few, you know, mm. but I think marketing themselves is going to be huge, especially in today's yeah. age. You know, like these guys, girls need to be on TikTok. They need to be, they need to have like photographers, videographers, and maybe like the paddle company like sponsors that. Right. Um, right. I think that I think that you're on the right track there. It has to be purely from a marketing perspective. That's the mm -hmm. only way that even in tennis now, I've been told this, I coach some players who are on tour and, and they speak to agencies and the agency will actually ask them right away, well, how many followers do your followers do you have? Even more mm -hmm. so than what are your projected results? And of course, again, nothing really matters unless you win, but they're very cognizant of what's your following and how much are you doing to, to push that. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think you're you're spot on there. The marketing has to be correct, and and you got to reach a wide audience. You got to make yourself a, yeah. a character. What well, What do you think, Stace? 
I think you're spot on. The only things I would probably add is I, I Travis, you said something about our paddle sponsors important. I think it's important because they're they're probably the real people making the money right now. I think uh, you, you know, so they're like the deep pockets in pickleball as an endemic sponsor. They're the ones making the money with all the rec players buying paddles. Um, I think what pickleball struggled with, and you've alluded to this with sponsorships, is getting non-endemic. So you have to look at endemic sponsors first, which are these paddle companies. So I think it's super important for players that are looking for sponsors. They have to, of course, think of a paddle company. Um, to your point, I don't know if I buy or play with a paddle because a certain player does. I think to John's point, a few people do it really well. Um, I think there's only two, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah. The rest and are by I, the wayside. I think um, some people do it really well too because they do do the clinics. So it's easy to do a clinic and attach yourself to that player and then, you know, make a sale with a paddle. Um, and then to your point, John, about branding and marketing, right? These companies want to attach themselves to the goodwill of these players. Mm -hmm. So what do you stand for? Who are you? Uh, right. Do you relate to people? Uh, and they want to, you know, attach onto your goodwill and reach your audience. Uh, so that right. marketing uh, and having a really good sense of who you want to be and what you stand for out there and being authentic, Travis, I think is so important. You hit on it uh, in terms of routiness on court. I think we gravitate towards people that are authentic, you know, authentic in themselves and have, uh, have something that they can relate to and stand for. What do you think mm -hmm. about a 38 year old single dad with a bad shoulder and a bad back, just throwing everything by the wayside to play only pickleball? You think people would attach to that? Oh, I mean, I think you hit the demographic uh, pretty well. Um, I think because honestly, that's on my mind all the time, like all the time. <laughs> and, and, I, and I go back to the Ben Johns match, 30 to 30 hours taught, didn't hit one pickleball. And I hated losing to him. I couldn't stand it. <laughs> I was up, I think I was up five for the first game, couldn't move. I was so slow. And all I thought is, man, if I could actually put in the time, kind of like Stacy said, I could beat this guy. I have no mm -hmm. doubt in my mind. But the question is, is the upside there? And so that's why I was asking the question, considering you guys have been in this. And I think what you hit on is it has to be authentic and you have to tell a story that people are intrigued by. And anyway, so... If yep. you if you see a an old man with a little girl on his back doing like squats and stuff, that'll be me <laughs> getting ready for Ben. You'll be ready, Ben. Yeah, you, have to, get, you have to get on TikTok. <laughs> what is that? I don't even know what that is, man. <laughs> oh, no. I got to get on TikTok. Got to get all that stuff going. You sure That's do. right. We want to see you and the Florida Smash all all over TikTok. Okay, we'll get that going. We'll get, I'm gonna, you know, we'll get the social media guys, some professionals. We don't, we don't, we don't need me doing it. I'm, I'm a struggle. <laughs> if anyone should be sponsored by Skechers, it's not Tyson, it's you. <laughs> walking souls, right? The air so I'll just pitch that idea <laughs> for that one. Got like hair transplant guys, and I got all kinds of stuff on the on the come up. Yeah, you got to start going after after those uh, companies, and not the paddle company. Right, fact, fact. <laughs> Anything else we should know, Travis? Any any other questions? No, I don't think so. I think I think that's uh, that's it. Just be ready for the Florida Smash. Be ready for MLP. Please watch. Please support. And let's all of us who are are in this keep growing the game of pickleball. It's it's the best game that I've ever played. The most fun I've ever had in sports. And I hope that it continues its rise. Well said. I was you took all the words right out of my mouth. I hope uh, everybody watches the draft. Watches the MLP again, June third through June fifth. Support yep. Florida Smash. Uh, make sure you go find them when they get all their social media up and grab the merch and, and watch them on the streams. Uh, John, any final words? Um, well, uh, Travis, the, the way we always go out, I wish there was a beer in here, but there will be when I see you at, at MLP. But we always choose the camera. Definitely have one. We For always the choose champ. the camera. Cheers. Yeah, damn okay. right. All right. So, Pickler out. Pickler out. See you guys. Thanks so much.